Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to join you today at the close of this forum, which has, among others, triggered a deep reflection of how we deal with the issue of refugees and how we can improve in our collective efforts. In this regard, I would like to thank the UNHCR High Commissioner, Mr. Filippo Grandi, the Swiss government, and the co-conveners for organizing this timely and inaugural forum. This subject, Excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, is deeply personal to me. At a tender age, I was forced to leave the warm and familiar to the cold and uncertain life as a refugee. Like it is for many refugees, this journey requires an insurmountable amount of courage. The most difficult being gathering the courage to leave everything behind and rebuild in a new environment. To start fresh, often against all odds. I acknowledge that for many reasons, chief of all luck, many refugees like me at the time did not get the opportunities that I did. As a refugee worker for over a decade, I remained dedicated to the refugee cause and sought to address refugee issues passionately. The challenges were vast and the response was largely inadequate. However, I must admit that despite facing great difficulty, the courage, hope and resilience that is characteristic of many refugees always shone through. Today, as a Prime Minister, I'm confronted with the same challenges, albeit with a greater expectation from those I represent to, among others, ensure stability, provide protection, and find sustainable solutions to force displacement. In Somalia, many lives have been lost and thousands have been forcibly displaced within and outside the country. About one million Somalis are leaving refugees in neighboring countries, while 2.6 million people are internally displaced. Additionally, Somalia hosts about 35,000 refugees from the region and is a transit state for migrants seeking better livelihoods in the Gulf and beyond. Improved conditions in the country has seen the return of about 90,000 Somalis. While we continue to work on further improvements of conditions to support refugee returns, I take this opportunity to call for the continued protection of all asylum seekers and refugees wherever they have sought protection. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, for decades, Somalia and its generous partners mounted robust response programs to address the need of refugees, IDBs, returnees, and host communities. Funds to the tune of billions have been spent on relief items and related support. However, Despite these efforts, the drivers of displacement recurred, often raising the need for more support and for an increase in number of people in need. Many years later, and for an increase in number of people in need, the vicious cycle of crisis and the traditional system or response continues with little variation. This method of response best characterized ad hoc, money school, and hand to mouth has helped to save lives in the short term, but the experience shows that it has done little, little to build resilience of communities to survive future shocks. It has done little, if any, to provide sustainable solutions 
to complex and protracted situations. Experience shows that responding to a crisis only when the casual county starts results in increased loss of lives and goes against the principle of humanity. Experience shows that eventually this way of working is costly both in terms of human lives and resource utilized. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we must change the way we do business in addressing these issues. We must seek sustainable solutions and pursue development approaches to address humanitarian concerns. We must acknowledge that eventually it is the extent of engagement of development actors working hand in hand with the government that determines continued resilience of populations and prevents a slip back to crisis and displacement. We must focus on addressing the root causes and the drivers of displacement. In this regard, we must invest unreservedly in improving good governance, the security sector, economic recovery and social services, which are critical elements for peace and stability. We must agree that the needs of those who have lived in displacement for years are varied but include to return to a safe and prosperous home. And if we are committed to ensuring this, then we must invest meaningfully in improving conditions in the countries of origin. In the spirit of burden sharing, we must work better to support Somalia and other nations whose population is displaced within and outside their countries which itself, Somalia, a refugee hosting country, a migrant transit country, a returnee receiving country, and lastly, a country rising and rebuilding from decades of instability. We must acknowledge that to achieve lasting solutions, there are no shortcuts and no half-hearted approaches. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants and the Comprehensive Refugee Response Framework provides a good platform to pursue protection and solutions to refugee problems. It is, it is spirit acknowledges that some countries bear a heavier burden than others in dealing with refugee issues and calls for support to the countries in these situations. It is reassuring to know that, if actualized, refugees in the region and beyond will benefit. I, however, would like to call for an expanded application of this approach to include protection, assistance, and solutions in situations of refugee returnees, as well as protracted situations in IDB context. An expanded approach would ensure that refugees who benefit from comprehensive support in countries of asylum would have similar support back at home. With regard to IDPs, this approach will help us to stabilize populations and prevent secondary displacement. For this approach to succeed, it must respond full circle to displacement from start to end. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, Somalia is on the path of recovery with a renewed sense of optimism and increased expectation from its passionate and talented population. To much, the federal government of Somalia is focused on creating enabling conditions by revamping efforts to address insecurity finding durable, durable solutions to address recurrent natural and man-made crises, prioritizing infrastructure development, delivery of quality basic services, skill building, creation of jobs and livelihood opportunities 
informal and informal sectors as well as local and national investment. Such development focused investment in Somalia will stabilize the population, boost economic growth, improve living conditions, and at the same time serve as a propeller for preventing displacement and achieving sustainable solutions. In line with Somalia's national development plan, Somalia, in the next five years, pledges to relocate and reintegrate 5,000 refugees, 25,000 refugee returnees, and 50,000 IDPs. Further pledges to create 250,000 new jobs in the field of agriculture, light manufacturing, and construction for IDPs and refugee returnees. 20% of these jobs will be allocated to IDPs and refugee returnees. To realign resources from the federal government as well as from humanitarian development partners to find a permanent solution for recurring flood and drought cycle, which is the key driver of displacement. And finally, Somalia committees and pledges to develop an inclusive national durable solution strategy and action plan and reinforce the National Durable Solution Secretariat to ensure strengthened coordination across federal member states in our country. Addressing these key strategic elements is an enormous task, which requires a holistic approach and resources to match. We call upon our partners to help us in this important undertaking. Through a strengthened partnership, your continuous support will enhance our efforts in recovery and development. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, in crafting a new way of working to find solutions, we must ask, what is the human cost of not adapting a new way of delivery? What are the consequences of responding or investing later than now, how do we account for the billions we have spent on this course? And lastly, are our efforts making lasting impact? For many reasons, we fall short. We must do better. As leaders, we must reflect on our own words and actions, our politics and policies, should not instill and create further displacement and strife. Our words and actions should promote unity and harmony. Let our efforts bring out the best in people. Let us understand that refugees are an underutilized resource, and as such, our words and actions should seek to bring out the best in them. After all, we have a moral obligation to protect and support the most vulnerable people. Thank you.